Hi guys, today we're going to be taking another look at notifications because there's been some developments since the last time we did a video on notifications. So we're going to be taking another look at showing and hiding channels which used to be called favoriting and unfavoriting. We're going to be taking a look at how to mute chats and group chats and then we'll dive back into the channel notification settings which is a relatively new feature in Microsoft Teams. I'm Gavin Jones. I am Transformation Manager for a Fortune 500 company. We've done lots of work trying to get people to adopt Teams and all the tips that we produce on YouTube come out of real life issues that we've seen as we've been training people. So hopefully they'll be of use to you as well. We've got a new video coming out every Tuesday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button, the little bell icon to make sure you get notified every time we produce a new video. So without further ado, let's get into Teams and take a look at the new notification settings. Okay, so let's dive straight into Teams. First thing is we're gonna just go back over uh, favoriting and unfavoriting channels, which is now called Show and Hide. So if I look at the test team that we, we've usually used, the Recap Core project team, I've got three channels that I can see uh, in my view, which is they're shown, and then two hidden channels, obviously they're hidden. Generally, you can never hide, and to show or hide them, you would click the three dots and there is no option to hide the general channel uh, at the time of recording. If we look at the testing one, that's shown and we can hide it, and then hiding moves it out of your view, although if you've selected it, it just makes it italic. When you click onto another channel, it'll go into hidden, and then we can either click on any of the hidden channels to view them without putting them into our view, or we can click on show at the end, and that'll permanently move them so we can always see that channel. But you can always view any other hidden channel, um, it just temporarily comes into your view, and then you can click on one of the other ones you've seen. So as well as being convenient that you would see channels there that you want to see and you can skip to them quite easily without going through the hidden channels list, the main thing that showing or hiding a channel does is enable or disable channel notifications. So if I'm in testing and I've got testing shown and I start typing that mention which is at channel, it'll suggest the channel that we're in which is testing um, or I could type at and start typing the channel name at testing. And then the channel notification or the app mention the channel will notify and put in the activity feed and ping the person, everybody who's shown that channel as in that they've not hidden it. So that's the first and best way of managing what you get notified about in Teams and what you don't. If you don't wanna get notified about loads of stuff happening in the channel, then just hide it and that by default turns off the notifications of that channel. So I'm just going to move on to chat after that quick recap. So in chat, people can add you to a direct one-to-one -one chat or a group chat, and you will get pinged about every single thing in that group chat. In chat, there's no threads, so you cannot reply to a certain message. Nothing's kept together. It's just one message after the other, like a, another chat app. Remember in the Teams bit, well, everything's threaded, so you should be clicking reply to reply to something, and that will make sure you're notifying the right people. In chat, we don't have that. And if you get added to a large group chat, then some of those messages might be overwhelming because it, it's no way of teams knowing what's applicable to you and what's not, like in a thread. So if you are added to a chat, obviously you can always leave it, but if you want to stay in there, but you don't want to get pinged every single time someone puts something in, there's now an option under the three dots next to the chat to mute the chat rather than just leave. If you mute the chat, it'll still tick up the unread message count and that chat will still go bold. It'll still jump to the top of your recent, but you won't get pinged about that every single time. So hopefully that should reduce some distraction for large group chats. And then just jumping back into Teams, there's some new options now, relatively new for managing your notifications around a channel. So when Teams first came out, all you could do is favorite or un unfavorite, which is now show and hide, um, or you could follow, which is then you get pinged about every single message that goes into that 
channel. So now Teams have evolved a little bit, we've got some more options. So rather than following a channel and favorite, which was quite close in <laughs> uh, terminology, which did get quite confusing. Now we've got show and hide. So if you can see the channel, you'll, you'll get channel notifications. If you can't see the channel because it's hidden, you won't get channel notifications. Something that gets quite confusing is that, like we said before, you're never in or not in a channel. You're in or out of a team. So even if you're hidden a channel, you can pull anyone into that chat by at mentioning them individually. If they are in the team, you can at mention someone individually from wherever you are in the team. So you don't need to go into a channel because you think someone is in that channel. You should be going to the channel applicable to what your subject is about that you want to collaborate on. So you can never not get pinged individually in Teams. Um, but channel notifications helps you a bit with the following and, and some of the channels. So say um, following is now called all new posts, which is off by default, which is great because usually you wouldn't want that. But that's if you want to get pinged about every single post that's put in the channel irrespective of if there's any app mentions for you or the channel. So I would keep that off by default. If you had one channel that was really important and you wanted to see everything that was going on, then you've got two options. One is to banner and feed, which is it pops up a little banner at the bottom for you and it puts it in your activity feed so you get pinged immediately. Only showing feed is you don't get pinged in the bottom of your screen, but when you go into your activity feed, you'll see an entry for every single um, post in that channel. So I would recommend that you leave it as off, but the thing you might want to change potentially is the channel mentions. So by default, if you have shown a channel, then you will get notified if someone says at channel, which is banner and feed, you'll get pinged straight away. That's a great way of notifying everybody to do that subject really quickly without at mentioning everybody individually, especially if you're in a large team. If you wanted to see a channel because it was convenient to keep it in your list but you didn't want to get pinged about everything all the time um, maybe you're in a support function and supporting a account which have their own channel you have got the option to turn those off completely but i guess you could just hide that channel to do the same thing or only showing feed so you won't get pinged all the time but it will go in your feed so if you're using your teams a lot and actually you don't want to get pinged all the time immediately you can just put it so you're only showing feed and then there's also reset to default, which is what we've got it as a moment off for all new posts and channel mentions you get banner and feed. So what did you think of the new notification settings? Are you going to use them? How do you manage your notifications already? Let us know in the comments below. Remember to like the video if you liked it. Hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified when we release a new video. We've got new ones coming out on Teams Tips every Tuesday. And then at me time, we love teams, especially in a corporate environment, but we still think there's quite a way to go to get everyone up to speed in terms of running a meeting effectively, which is why we've got an iPhone app to help you do just that. It's called me time meeting timer. It's a very simple timer, but we think it really helps people start, stay and finish on time in their meetings. And we'd love it if you checked it out. If you want to find out more, visit the website at www metimeapps.com or search for me time in the ios app store so thanks for watching so far and we'll see you in the next video